uh, the road. Because uh, at some point, those vehicles will be autonomous, probably in the next five or 10 years. Yeah, right? I was going to say, they. I think they already have some level of autonomy built in, even though they're not being used. Yeah. <clears throat> well, because you, the cameras would be connected to Amazon's OpenCV platform. Mm-hmm. And so OpenCV would allow it to um, would would allow it to collect uh, uh, um, analytical data as it as it as it drives right and as it operates. Let's see if I can find it. There was another. Let me see. What's the thing he's trying? That does, let me go back up here because you got uh, John. Oh wait, John. That was okay. John Deere will remotely dis, uh, disable if you tamper with the software. Yeah, that was one of the things that Lewis Rossman was lobbying against. It was yeah. largely because he had he had like a a uh, farmers association that got behind him um, about that, right? Because now farmers can't even fix their own John Deere tractors anymore. Oh yeah, they locked out. You know, yep. uh, they all managed by satellite and. As soon as you try, as soon as you need service for it, you got to bring it in. Well, you got to yep. pay somebody to. Um... Whereas people used to service their own tractors all the time. Yeah, and that's why a lot of the guys are holding on to the old tractors. Yeah. So this is just Open CV. What I was mentioning earlier. Um... Hey, Mike, Sorry. I'm gonna go re up on my team, man. Give me a second. All right. Okay? All right. All right. All right. Yeah, this is just OpenCV. So OpenCV is an open source and release uh, under Apache 2, and it's used for uh, computer vision. And so you combine computer vision with AI, and now you have a very robust platform for um, autonomy, autonomous vehicles and autonomous driving and stuff like that, as well as you can do it for human beings as well um, with security um, when you're talking about surveillance and stuff like that. So that's what I was referring to. Um, uh, Edson says uh, Airbus was testing electric planes before the pandemic. Yeah, but the problem is with electric planes is that um, they're heavy because the batteries are heavy and it's hard to uh, keep something like that in flight for a long time. Um, for short flights, that makes a lot of sense. But for long flights, um, you're not going to have battery capacity to, um, you know, to go on a 14, 18 hour flight. It's just not going to happen. In my opinion, at least not with the current technology. Uh, Royal Loyal says EVs can only travel so far. After that, you won't be able to recharge frequently. I think some of that's starting to change. Um, we just don't have the grid capacity right now to really charge up uh, vehicles at um, the same rate that you would for, for 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 gas, right, or diesel. You know, I think it takes me about seven minutes to fill up my tank. And I'm talking about like 13 and a half, 14 gallons of, of, of uh, octane fuel. Um, with an EV, the fastest you might charge it is 20 minutes at best. And so we haven't reached that level as of yet where we can actually have a one for one comparison. But I do see that changing in the next maybe five years or so. I think by 2025, you'll start seeing um, new high-end models that can actually um, charge in a short amount of time, but you're talking 440 volts uh, uh, for for a charging station. In order to charge a car at that capacity, or EV at that capacity, you would have to use up all of the um, all of the power inside of like uh, you know the Trump Tower in order to charge it at that at that rate. It may not be feasible, and I think that that's why you see Toyota kind of backing away from EVs. And, and focusing on hybrids primarily because we just don't have the charging infrastructure as of yet. You know, even now in in, in the summertime, when, if it's really hot uh, and everybody's running their ACs, you're going to see a blackout in in the city. Whether it's New York, Boston, my, Miami, especially these places, you're going to see rolling blackouts because people just don't. Have, it, the grid just doesn't have the capacity to serve all all of these um, all of these people. Running their eight, running their air conditioners inside these hot buildings. Now you combine that with trying to charge a whole bunch of electric vehicles at the same time. Not going to work. In Boston, we need at least 150 megawatt capacity 
add-on additionally to complement all of these new vehicles coming online. And we just don't have it. We're not going to have it for another seven years. So what are they going to do? I don't know. Um, great, you know, adding on to the grid is not that easy. You, 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 you're talking about uh, building new infrastructure, testing it, and then approving it and getting permits for it. That's, that stuff is not easy. I, I mean, they don't even fix potholes that easy. So imagine trying to add um, 150 megawatts, you know, 250 megawatts of power um, capacity to a to a metropolitan area. It's just not that easy. You know, you're going to have to come up with alternative methods. Let's see. Um, so if he's going to intro, oh, okay, well, all right. Uh, Giomi says um, there's going to be a need to ed to educational systems for future generations to be fit for fourth IR. That's what they're talking about um, right now at Davos. Um, the Labor Secretary Marty Walsh, who's the former mayor of Boston, he um, he's over there figuring that out right now. They're having discussions over there right now about that, and so they're trying to figure out a way to um, incorporate this stuff into the um, the the, the, the um, K through twelve um, platforms. So. I don't think that um, that's going to change overnight because you have a uh, um, a, a very polarized um, uh, uh, Washington D.C. You know uh, the politics, you know, with all the banning on critical race theory and you know and, and things like that. It makes it hard. Say, to man, that, that that we're talking about a, a quasi overhaul of our educational system. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the shortcut to that, though, is that you would have to have after school programs um, that yeah. really focus yeah. on that type of stuff. And that's where think tanks and other sort of nonprofit organizations, you know, guys like Q Butter, brothers like Q Butter, who who run his his right. um, after school program, stuff like that. that yeah, keeps shout them out to Q Butter. Yep. Shout out to him. So you're going to see a lot more than that hidden genius out there in California. I think they're doing really dope work with black boys. Um, and in fact, I think they got an award recently for, for the work that they do as a model. Um, let me see if I can share it real quick. Yeah, I think also, um, man, um, I mean, I re dude, I, I remember when I was in school, man, I was like Rocket Club shit like that, right? Um, I don't know if they have clubs like that in schools anymore. Whereas it's, it's kind of that that is, that is kind of follow it dovetails what you're talking about in terms of like like after school programs and stuff like that. But then there were also like these clubs mm -hmm. that schools used to have. I I'm not I don't know if they have those anymore. Like I said, I was I used to be in Rocket Club, dude, fourth and fifth grade, bro. I that was that was when I was buying Estes rockets. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we'd go out into the out into the the field at the school. And, whoo, shoot the rockets up and stuff like that. We used to, mm -hmm. you know, build them, build them, you know, in, in, in class. I don't know if they have that stuff anymore. So a lot of funding is cut for schools first, if anything else, man. They, you know, they'll cut schooling before they cut the military. So um, that that's kind of how it goes. And so that's why you don't see it or hear a whole lot of it. But programs like, you know, Hidden Genius Project, um, they focus on a lot of what you're talking about. Um, you know, black male youth in high school are encouraged to join the 2023 intensive immersion program cohorts. Deadline is February 19th. These are so, this is some of the stuff that goes on out there in Cali. And so, um, our intense our intensive immersion program is a 15 month holistic mentorship experience that provides computer science, software development, entrepreneurship, and leadership training to black male high school students in Oakland, uh, Richmond, Los Angeles, and Detroit. And so, um, uh, Catalyst Programs, um, Hidden Genius Project offers free single and multi-day events and workshops led by youth educators throughout the year with the express aim of igniting interest and in exposing boys and young people of color to mentors, basic computer program and pathways to tech careers. They're doing a lot of dope stuff. There's some, Put it like this. Um, the men's fair has this sort of notion that says, oh, you know, black boys read on the third grade level. Right. It, it, but there's no actual <laughs> actions, you know, followed up with with those statements. Right? It's just it's just a statement. Right. <laughs> yeah. This is a statement. Right. And so. 
pro, uh, platforms like Hidden Genius Project, they're actually trying to close those gaps. But when you have pontificators in the space um, who, who, who lament about um, the literacy rates of black boys, but don't really follow it up with any action, uh, then yeah, it, it, it would seem like you would need to integrate it into the schools, but there's but also- really don't. Yeah. You, you also have pro programs and platforms like this that are taking off and um, and becoming models for, um, you know, becoming models for uh, the government to actually foster. And so. Hmm. Yeah, and they're getting a lot of, you know, support, you know, from 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 the um, Silicon Valley and whatnot. So, yeah. you know, in the next couple of years, you're going to see a lot of. Um, uh, a lot of pro, uh, uh, progress come out of that, and and the naysayers and the pontificators who who sat around talking about uh, I'm not going to raise nobody else's kids and black boys read at a third grade level. Well, you'll just be saying that, and these kids will come and take all the opportunities away from you because you failed to follow up on it. Right. So, I think uh, we can also throw esports into that as well. I know um, there's a few schools here in Cali where, uh, you know, they're, they're really putting a lot behind like their esports programs. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, me, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I think esports. I'm thinking sim racing because there's a mm -hmm. direct correlation to the real world, right. As, as opposed to like traditional esports gaming, when you get into sim racing, right. There's a direct correlation between sim racing and the real racing like it's that damn close you know what i mean so like there's an engineering component um hell uh shout outs to K uh jamal kita auto uh i think the last tv uh the esports last year we did we did we did some live engineering right where we were changing setup parameters on the car and stuff right so um but i, I think there's there's that component too well, I also think that you're going to see a lot more metaverse come into play, mm -hmm. right? Because now you don't need to send somebody to some kind of technical facility. They can actually uh, put the goggles on um, and, and really get involved in the um, the mechanical aspect of, of developing, you know, um, the tech for and repairing the tech for in, in, um, in terms of EVs and other forms of uh, vehicle platforms. So... Mm -hmm. But, you know, to, to your point, the National Education Association says esports sees explosive growth in U.S. high schools. Boom. Competitive video gaming is happening in high schools across the country as coaches celebrate the teamwork and critical thinking necessary to win. This is this is um, this is uh, especially when you start talking about a pandemic and people can't play football and basketball and stuff like that. They have to play in a bubble in my in, in Florida somewhere. No. This is changing now. This is a different 